musicians now is that okay the sound no feedback um yeah praise the lord that i have a testimony to bring um i heard uh the salvation message on the 8th of june 2002 uh, a date that stands out vividly in my mind um up to that point i i must say i wasn't looking for god i honestly thought i i, I knew god i was brought up in dublin and uh brought up in a catholic household and they're my family and their family, et cetera, were brought up Catholic. Um, I looked around and saw them doing it. And, and I'll be honest, I just followed suit. Um, and I got involved in all the things in the Catholic system. I made my communion, made my confirmation, but nothing ever changed. Nothing. I was still the same person regardless of what I did. So I remember I always had a conscience towards God. And even though I did, as I grew older, um, I got involved in certain things that I probably didn't want to because I, I knew God was was true. But you find yourself, you know, drinking and, and doing things and partying or whatever. And you look around and I think you, you justify yourself what everybody else is doing, you know. And I also did have this um, belief for teaching from an early age that um, on my deathbed that the priest would come in and absolve me from my sins. Mm -hmm. And it was kind of for me that that sounded pretty good, you know. And, and I, when I look back now, I can see it was for me personally, it was very uh, a non-committal lifestyle kind of do what you want during the week and on Sunday be be uh appear to be a Christian. Um but my life was was totally the opposite. My life particularly changed um in in 1999 when my only brother Martin had turned to drugs and I saw him struggle for a few years. Um and despite my parents trying to do everything to help him and he was in NA meetings and you know doing all this different things and he was clean for a period of time. Um, but obviously he he had got tempted and he couldn't um you know stay away from stay away from the temptation and because of that he had been clean when he did take more drugs it went straight to his brain and uh, he died at the age of twenty seven so um something I never ever expected to happen to my family 
I think as well, because of drugs, there's such a big stigma, you know, on your family. And you, you always have this thought, you know, it's the bad people out on the road. You know, they're the ones that have all of that in, in their lives. You don't think it's going to come to your doorstep. And and people do look at, you know, people with drug addicts in a particular way. So, yeah, I even would have hidden the fact that my brother had been a drug addict and he had died of a drug overdose. Um, during that time, obviously, I was heartbroken. I watched my parents struggle. I thought, how do they even get up out of bed if I can barely get up? But I used to pretend to be a strong person for them, I think. There's only a couple of people, Anthony being one of them, that knew how truly broken hearted I was. And uh, it was only after some years later, he, he told me that I was quite a miserable person during that time. <laughs> um, he didn't hold back, uh, which was true. It's only now that I, I can look back and see that. So uh, the opportunity actually, um, actually during that time, I, I went to a counsellor because somebody had said, suggested, I broke down one day in work and they said, you should go to a counsellor. So I thought, maybe I need to, maybe I need to speak to somebody. And I just remember I went once and when I walked into the room, all I can say from the moment she started speaking, I thought to myself, you haven't a clue what I'm going through. You know, what's 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 wrong with me is on my heart and my mind. And I just had this fleeting thought that only God could help me. I didn't know how, but that was that what I just in that moment, I thought I won't be coming back here. This is not going to help me at all. And I didn't. I never went back to any counselor after that. Then I kind of got involved in the things of the occult. I used to go to tarot card readers, mediums, loved all of that, really did. Um, and during through doing that, um, I actually started to get involved in energy healing, Reiki healing. And uh, my plan was to be to be a Reiki master, which makes me smile now because I think, oh, my goodness. Even though at the time, Anthony was saying to me, are you sure you should be really messing around that, with that stuff? And I'd be like, God, and this and and this and that was the problem. Like in my head, that's how I thought. So anyway, I really think the Lord saved me from all of that because um. Then in 2001, Anthony had said he was going to go to Australia. He just qualified as an accountant and he really wanted to go to study. And, and I, I made a decision that I wanted to go to when he allowed me go with him. <laughs> and uh, yeah, praise the Lord. So um, I ended up, we ended up going to Australia. But to be honest, while I was there, I was just as heartbroken. I had an amazing adventure, amazing time over there, worked and lived a life over there. But I was always one step away from breaking down inside and just truly believing that why should I be happy my brother died I don't really deserve to be happy you know always having this guilt and these thoughts and all this negativity in your head that never really allows you to be fulfilled in any moment um so anyway so uh, we we're almost one year and during that time as well being in a camper van and going traveling we'd be reading all these prophecy self self-help books and oh I can name all these weird books that I've read but <laughs> They did nothing. Um, yeah, and you're just even going. I I used to even go into the church at times. Um, you know, I still I still went along to mass or whatever. I remember vividly my last confession in Australia. And at that moment in time, I was pouring out my heart to the priest. And I just remember this, it really stood with me. I poured out my heart, he said these words back and then told me to repeat these prayers. And I thought, how's that supposed to help? Which it didn't. And I I I thought to myself, why am I doing this? And I I, I never went back in again. Um, but what I was going to say is even in moments that I went to the church, there would be peace in my life in that moment when I walked into that quiet church. But when I left that building, I was still the same person, broken hearted on the inside. So uh, I do remember a few times crying out to God in Australia, thinking there was one point that I thought, God, I, I can't actually do this anymore. It's too hard. And a couple of weeks or a few months later, I can't remember exactly when we were on the street in Australia. Somebody um, gave us an invitation to go along to this convention we went along thinking it was something to do with energy healing it was nothing to do with that <laughs> I reckon God just kind of blinded me in that moment just to get me there because we honestly thought we were following God so we went up to the convention and when we walked in there was all these people around and nobody spoke to us we went in by them and uh, I remember sitting in this big hall listening to a testimony somebody testifying what God had done to them and I'll be honest I was quite proud in that moment thinking I'm Irish and Catholic. You needed it. <laughs> I don't. And uh, I went out to tell Anthony, let's go. And he was being spoken to. And what's what stopped me in my steps was this man had the Bible open, which I respected to be the word of God. And I noticed Anthony was just speaking back his own words of wisdom, which wasn't a lot of wisdom. <laughs> and uh, but this this man was showing us scriptures, which I believe to be the word of God. And he just just challenges me. He, he asks us, look, um, 
have you received the Holy Spirit since you believed? And I said, yeah, when I was 12, I made my confirmation. And he said, what happened? And I, I repeated the same words. And he said, did you know that in the early Christian church, the day of Pentecost, when people, um, when the Holy Spirit was first outpoured, you know, they spoke in tongues. And that that experience is still available today. And in my head, I was thinking, how come I don't know this? I thought I knew a bit about the Bible. Mm -hmm. And then they said to us, have you been baptized since you believed? Um, yeah, when I was a baby. And again, <laughs> he took the rug out from my feet and he said, again, there's no babies being baptized or christened in the Bible. That That's uh, man-made. And he explained about Jesus was baptized as an adult and a spiritual of your own life. Um, and he said that priesthood for us. And I, I remember just thinking, yeah, that's true. I, I, I've only, yeah, I saw Jesus being baptized as an adult. And he just put it to us this day. He said, we can go in and have prayer. You can ask God for the Holy Spirit and he will answer you in that moment. You'll have no doubts because you'll speak in tongues. So we went in after Anthony stopped arguing. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, when I, all I can say is when we went in and um, the first few minutes, I was listening to them praying in tongues and thinking, wow, this is amazing. And they were really seeking for the Holy Spirit. But the pastor stopped and he said, Rachel, you're asking God for the Holy Spirit. You're not asking for a cup of tea. And uh, in that moment, I thought, yeah, if this is true, I just knew in that moment, if this was the truth, I couldn't walk away from it. So we started praying again. And all I can recognize now, um, 21 years later, in that moment, I was repentant because inside I said, God, I'm sorry for everything I've ever done. If this is true, fill me with your Holy Spirit. And I spoke in tongues in that second. And nobody ever had to say anything from that moment. I knew it was true. And uh, they asked me, do you want to get baptized, you know, to fulfill the scripture of being born again? And I remember turning to Anthony to, to kind of get his advice. We've been together eight years at that stage. We did everything together. And uh, if he had said jump, I would have said how high. But in that moment, I said, what do you think, Anthony? And again, the pastor brought me back to reality. And he said, Rachel, God has just given you the Holy Spirit. When the Lord returns, you can't blame anybody. It's between you and God. And it just I just knew in that moment I couldn't. I had no I had no excuse. God had confirmed it in my life in that moment. So I got baptized by full immersion that day. And um boy, I was totally changed in that moment. Um when I, I got born again, when I was baptized and received the Holy Spirit, healed of the broken heart instantly. I didn't even look for that. That's not why I prayed. And it was only a couple of days later I realized I have no more grief. I've no more sorrow. I've no more bitterness, no more, you know, regrets or guilt. I've none of that. It was like the Lord had swept my head clean and my heart was whole again. I had joy, no regrets, no, no feeling. Do I deserve to be happy? It was amazing in that moment. I was totally brand new, which I knew now. I know now the scriptures talk about being brand new and, um, yeah, many changes in that instant stop swearing, um, delivered from different things like, uh, um, drink and everything it was amazing totally different person and um, from when I walked into that convention and walked out came back to Ireland and um, I'll speed it up because I know I've gone on a bit as usual and um, came back to Ireland and yeah we saw we got married on the way back actually and um, which is another story in itself and uh, praise the Lord just I'm just so grateful on that day that somebody handed me a leaflet on that street that really took the time you know we went along to the convention and and that the Lord confirmed it with signs following just the way somebody had showed me in the scriptures so there was no denying it and since then look I I just uh people have this idea you know that um a Christian is boring like it's a boring life I've had such an abundant life to date <laughs> there's so much I've done I've experienced so much and just every day I think as well just knowing that whatever's going on look I'm not perfect and I certainly have trials and tribulations but whatever's happening, I know who to go to. I know that I can just pay, pray in that instant and I have the Lord's ear. Whereas before I didn't, I always kind of felt my prayer was far away and was he listening? But now I see miracles. Now I see healings and in the people's lives that come to the church and, and just being able to share with people what an amazing life. And wow, we don't have to be caught up in this rat race the way it is now. And so many things that are just crazy in this world that the Lord has given us a way out. And I'm really thankful that praise the Lord that somebody did um, preach to us on that day. And uh, yeah, I leave you there. Amen. Amen. <clears throat> Listen, 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 listen. Don't don't curse me. <laughs> <laughs> and, and and of course, uh, oh. Pastor Anthony received this order. Yeah. Anyway, that's his story. You can tell. Thank God for that. I better <laughs> change the camera. <laughs> oh, sorry. Just one second.
Still up here, yeah. I was sitting in the sunshine today, so I look very looking at me sat there. <laughs> but I was, I was putting, I was feeding the fish, and then I was witnessing to a, a lady again for an hour. So. Sorry. Hence, hence the extra red face I have here. Um, you look very well. Yeah. Uh, the weekend, uh, Pastor Anthony and I were in Liverpool, and uh, it was a, a 50-year jubilee occasion. And uh, from Friday to Sunday evening, which was very good and very educational, if you like, to, to the Lord's Word, we learned a lot. You can't take every word in on board. Um, but there's a few scriptures there that you can oh I could see I tell you that one. You could see I tell you with them all. And uh but the, um there's some that you can remember and others, you know, so I, I I was left with a few that I chose and a couple of my own that I picked out. But uh it's only a ten minute talk, so you couldn't possibly for three days. But it was an excellent uh trip. And to learn so much and um, to get so much involved, to meet so many people from all over the world, all friends and new. And um, so it was really good and, um, you know, uh, fulfilling, uh, very peaceful, very friendly, very everything um, to say. I have very little to complain about, really. Uh, we had, Pastor Anthony, I know I had some laughs and... Mm -hmm. uh, and 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 uh, things to happen like, but uh, it was very good to say the least. So I, as I said, I picked out a couple of uh, a few few scriptures that I think might be fulfilling, and uh, that we, we we can through God's power that we found out all these things. That it's mostly based on to be forgiven and forgiveness uh, in our walk in our life and uh, um those sorts of things. So there was all different scriptures that pointed at that particular uh what you call issue to carry around if you haven't forgiven someone you know you're carrying around it's like being in prison and uh, you're carrying around a bundle of stuff in your head for uh you have you're, you're a christian and uh it, it's another little extra thing that you need to brush away and when i came like immediately after race six months after race so i passed out he came to the lord i got born again and well, my uh, my uh, sins was forgiven from God by the desire for the drink was gone, alcohol was gone. Um, two thousand and two, this was, and uh, going into two thousand and three, um, I was a gambler. Um, I gambled for years, and um, yeah, uh, I I cursed and swore. I thought I was a great guy for cursing, and I incented cursing. I was a taxi driver at the time. I was under a lot of stress uh, due to Martin, which is Rachel's brother, my only son. And I was carrying all that uh, in my head, uh, drinking heavy. And I wasn't what you call a, 
wake up in the middle of the night to drink a bottle of whiskey. It's just I'd go to the pub and I'd consume a lot of drink. But um, it was it was heavy stuff and uh, I was full of aggression. But like Rachel said, she was hit of a broken heart, and so was I. So there was a lot of these things here that uh I'll go into other, other bits and people or pieces as we go along. But if you turn to uh, Mark 11, please. Mark 11. Verse 22. Yeah. Um, And Jesus answered and said to them, Have faith in God. For fairly I say unto you, that these ever shall say unto this mountain, Be thou removed, and be thou cast into the sea, and shall not doubt in his heart, but shall believe for these things which he said shall come to pass. He shall have whatever he said. Therefore I say unto you, what things soever ye desire, when ye pray, believe that ye receive them, and ye shall have them. So in, in verse 23, the Lord is saying that if you believe, if you have the faith, believe in God first to have the faith in God, these, your, 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 these things can happen to you. If you desire the mountain not lifted, uh, Mount Everest be removed. <laughs> It, it's it's as high as you like that there's nothing there that your faith can't and by true God that you can't be removed. And this particular verse always reminds me of a brother Barry passed away in 2019 and he was at, uh, always quoted this scripture in particular when he wanted to give up the cigarettes. He was a heavy smoker and uh, he said he felt he, he very highly intelligent chap um, like you know was a school teacher but his main thing, like I had one thing and he had another. Everybody had a little thing that they need to push away. And he had smoking. And he, he seen the scripture and he said, look, I'm going to put the prayer, a good prayer. Pray from the heart, you know, with convincing and meaning. Not like uh, we used to do, I'm not slagging off the Catholic Church, but 10 Hail Mary, 10 mm -hmm. Hail Fathers, that type of thing. Mm -hmm. it, that's, that's not the way. Uh, repetitive uh, praying like that to, uh, to have God in your heart with praying tongues if you receive the Holy Spirit and pray in tongues and it's the way you put the prayer to God to ask him, I, Lord I need this I need you so this he did and he gave the cigarettes up the cigarettes have gone the next day and uh, therefore I say to you what things whoever you destroy is when you pray believe you receive them and you shall have them and I used to have a little formula Pray, believe for this thing you're praying for, and you will receive. And I thought it was Paddy's formula, but it wasn't because it was here. <laughs> I, I picked up on I must have put it together. But a little formula, which is the thing to do anyway, pray for what you need or uh, whatever the problem might be, and, and receive, you know, believe in what you're praying for. Um, and when you stand praying, forgive if you have aught against any, that your Father also, which is, which is in heaven, God, may forgive you your trespasses. But if you do not forgive, neither will your Father, which is in heaven, forgive your trespasses. So, I mean, uh, if you hate your neighbor next door or you hate anyone or you don't like them and because they do this and because the other, um, you're not forgiving them for what they are accepting. Um, meet them, fix it up, sort it, and say hello or whatever. And uh, the, the um, yeah, and 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 these things can. Uh, how do you expect God to forgive you your sins if you're not forgiving someone else? Mm -hmm. And compared to God, God is the one to forgiving you. And why should you be um, flying against Him by saying I'm not forgetting her or him? Look what you did on me and. They never paid a hundred euros back to me, and they're out drinking now. Some sort of silly, mis silly misdemeanor, or what you might have said ten years ago. These little things that you need to shove away. Um, Pastor Anthony gave an example in his talk that I and myself in my walk had a bitter, bitter enemy. I had went through all the desire for drink, the gambling, some of the same, and the coarseness, swearing, 
I particularly was healed of a broken heart. Huge, huge, uh, big blessing to say the least, because the aggression was taken out of me. And all it's just not my testimony, but I'm just giving an example. Um, that happened to me, and uh, this guy I hated with boy buckets. I, you know, and I won't go into detail, but that was still on my mind. And I was at the moving away from the area where this guy was the problem. Not because of him, but I should have done it years before that anyway. And uh, for pure stubbornness and whatever else was in my head, I, I didn't move and I should have moved. But to, to go away from that area. But lo and behold, um, I was out in uh, a supermarket, which is a good bit away from where the area I lived in. And I'm going around and around the island doing this and that and the other. And who the bump in on to my good friend? <laughs> of all the people in China, I bumped into <laughs> him. And his, uh, his nickname was the Gorilla. And um, <clears throat> I won't go into details because of his size and stuff. But when we, you know, oh, goodness me, he said, hell yeah, to that effect. And the spirit that I was at being everything was doing good for, good for me in the Lord, meetings and prayers and, and all the other good things that happened to me. And I said, how are you? What's mm. the story or something like that? Mm. And that one instant, the spirit took over my my and Paddy now, that's okay. Mm. And that lifted, that was another big board and a yoke around my neck, gone. Mm. For one word and one part of forgiveness, I didn't break into a big, this is what Entrage it and entrage it with being in uh, the Lord and through the Holy Spirit. These things are there which are all the time for you not to get mad and explode. But this was a big thing that was biting into my life all the time for years and years. And in one instant, it was gone. So praise the Lord. But as I said, as God forgave me my sins, I forgave him his. And uh, uh, that burden was lifted from me. Besides all the other blessings that got from being in the Lord. So it's faith, believe, forgive, pray with your heart to God. That's in that, those few scriptures. So if we go to uh, Ephesians, yeah? Ephesians 3, turn you up to next few books. Ephesians 3. And... Uh, verse 20, yeah? Just say 19. And to know the love of Christ which passeth knowledge, that ye might be filled with all the fullness of God. Now unto him that is able to do exceeding abundantly above all that we ask or think, according to the power that walketh in us. Unto him be glory in the church, by Christ Jesus throughout all our ages, world without end. Amen. And I, um, this is one of the scriptures I picked out, like I sort of stood out abundantly and exceedingly. Um, you, you get more than you would normally from God, but you get more than you, you're asking for, the blessing you're praying for, and the things you're doing in, in, in your walk. Tells it, uh, God and by being, being a Christian, being righteous and in the Lord, you, you get more things from than you actually imagine that you really want. It's exceedingly and in abundance. Mm -hmm. um, and this is just another uh, grateful thing to be. And uh, what world, world, the world is it's not there for you to get these things, you get them through God, through the prayer, through your heart, with, with, with sincerity. Um, we are nearly, I'm nearly there. Oh, that's getting there. Okay, so we move to James. So, James 5, yeah? Yeah, I've only another half an hour to go. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, where are we? <clears throat> yeah, yeah. Uh, this was just uh, over the years. Uh, this particular verse was one of my favourites, and it's come back. It keeps coming back to me again and again. The power of prayer, 
Um, so if you go to James 5.15, chapter 5, verse 15, I'll read 14. Is any sick among you? That's a question mark. Um, let him call for the elder of the church and let them pray over him, anoint him with oil in the name of the Lord. And the prayer of faith shall save the sick, and the Lord shall raise him up. And if he had committed sins, they shall be forgiven. Confess your faults one to another, and pray one for another, that he may be healed. The effectual faith and prayer of a righteous man availeth much. And there again we have... Um, we have, yeah, the power of prayer, and there's so much that the the, the effectual and feeble in prayer is is like if you're going to be praying like what I have been praying each one, first time you get out of bed, the three piece it's called paddy pillow for praying, <laughs> and down comes the pillow because I of a, of a bit of a need there. And I have my prayer. And that comes before my breakfast, which is going to cost <laughs> me eyes all the time. Paddy, you must get up, you're hungry. Get up, have your breakfast, have your breakfast, have your breakfast. <laughs> and I won't let that beat me. I have the prayer for it. <laughs> but that's effectual speak. You're praying for something before you do anything. <laughs> oh, I must put the kettle on before I have prayer. No, you put God first. You put the Lord first. And it's a good habit for me. I'm not saying everybody, but that's, that's the habit I had. And... Uh, the power of God of prayer. Like there's so many things in this world. I just I quote a few of them that you could be praying for. That's that's been testimonies heard from all over the world. Rachel tonight even. Uh, so much involved there in, in in being in the Lord. But you you can just depression, uh, anxiety, stress. You know that's and uh, phobias, anger. We might have bad tempers. You can pray for that. Cool down, calm down. The Lord has put his hand on you. You're okay. Mm. Relax. Road rage. Oh, I remember the taxi driver, and I was an ex taxi driver, and he said to us the most fabulous thing was his. He was entirely wrong. After years and years driving, and he shouted out to me, I hope all your kids get cancer, and I hope you get horrible things to say. And I said, Okay, mind where you're going, they're going around the room. Or something like that. Okay, whatever I said to him. But uh, in the old days, I'd be chasing after a hundred miles an hour. <laughs> you know, and I said, Paddy, what? Oh, yeah, yeah, you're in the Lord, Paddy, now, relax. <laughs> but, um, yeah, and the biggest of all was the bereavement. And I had Rachel's brother, uh, and my only son, Sandra, could see right today, but that she had that bereavement herself for a young girl, daughter. And uh, to come out of that uh, is, is huge. Uh, to pray for a broken heart. <clears throat> All the hatred that I had in my system and body was gone. And um, I, I was able to accept the sadness and, and the flashbacks and the memories and all, but without all, all anxiety attached to it, it was a, a peaceful sadness I'd ha had to take that with me in my life, you know. So, um, yeah, so we might go to, I think I have a few more minutes no, I'll, I'll just read out Luke 6, verse 27. You can take it down for, for a homework. You're not getting away with it tonight now. <laughs> I don't see any boilers coming out. <laughs> anyway, no. Uh, yeah, well, Luke 6, verse 27. Judge not, and you shall not be judged. Condemn not, and you shall not be condemned. Forgive, and you shall be forgiven. Again, there's a scripture there saying, you forgive You'll be forgiven. You were forgiven, and now you forgive. Uh, you know that's the way it goes. And uh, and to condemn nobody. If you condemn someone, I mean, you're not forgiving them for what they said or done. If you're going to condemn them, so this is a whole big fast there to say the way you should carry your life through. Um, well, I think uh, yeah, I go. To, we finish off in Acts two, okay? Acts two. You start to John. Yeah. Now, um, yeah, I'm going to get this verse proper now. 
38. Okay, Acts 2, verse 38. And in a nutshell, it this is telling you, uh, I'm looking at I'm looking at 28. I'll have to go back to Spec Cyrus. <laughs> I knew the, I knew there was something on there. Yeah. So for us to receive the Holy Spirit, we 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 uh we went for prayer and we asked God to work the slate clean. That were the words that used to me before I went to uh, repent for my sins and try for, to, to receive the spirit to be baptized, etc. And they repent, uh, as it says here in first of two, then Peter said, the three thousand are converted at very time. Um that Peter said unto them, Repent and be baptized, every one of you, in the name of Jesus Christ, for the remission of sins, that you shall receive the gift of the Holy Ghost. And that day I went for uh, I was told you it was a real layman's term, your slate will be your sins. It's this is not just a little confession box with so many buns across and it's a totally different scenario altogether. It's more truthful, there's more godly godliness in it. There's more everything in it that you would say, Yeah, I'll I'll go for that. I, I this is this is different. And I've seen people going prepared to receive the spirit. I see people having the spirit, praying in tongues, and I wanted to in in one day I said, Oh that's everything I've 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 been in not a nice going and all this thing that was in my head uh was it's still there don't forget so i went for prayer and i i asked the lord to forgive me my sins and i was he asked that could you say hallelujah you repeat the word hallelujah and all of a sudden bam mm. i come out of this room and somebody took a picture of me i don't know where it is at the moment and i, I happiest looking silly as looking <laughs> grin on my face I was so different. I wasn't Paddy. I said, is that me? I said to myself, <laughs> wow. And I was a different guy after you get it. I received the Holy Spirit with a pastor and, and uh, Rachel was there with me. And uh, I got baptized the next day. And I just says what Peter's saying here. Uh, Repent, be baptized, every one of you, in the name of J Jesus Christ, which is very, very appropriate. For all the good things we get from being in the Lord, then Tony, Sandra, Rachel, myself at the moment, and everyone is looking in, uh, and, and all over the world. And we've heard them, heard them in Liverpool three times, different testimonies, people getting up. It's unbelievable their things, but it's all true. It's not like there's not one lie added or taken away the same as what's in the Bible. There's nothing added or taken away. We go over directly what the Bible says, what God said. This is God's book. This is his way. This is the truth. And this is what we believe. And I'll leave it there. Amen. Amen. Amen.